It's Tuesday, September 23rd, 2014, and you're listening to Sin Boldly, the podcast of the Sign Your Name Project. I'm your host, Trey Comstock, and back with me, as always, is Stephen Doss. Hello! On tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about three of the most important things in American life. Guns, beer, and Jesus. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, I love that intro. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Guns, beer, and Jesus in this week's discussion. So, St- Stephen, Stephen, guns, d- d- beer, and Jesus? Yes. Yes. That's everything that has to do with Christianity right there. Guns, beer, and Jesus. So, my lovely I mean, I realize we did an episode on ISIS, but <laughs> explain this to me. Okay, so, guns are awesome, beer is awesome, and Jesus is awesome. You got According- me on two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. According to um, this church out of Joplin, Missouri. So I get today this article from the lovely Kathleen Royston. Friend of the show, if not a normal co-host that someday will return. (laughs) Um, So she sends a link to me about this uh, church, this article from what is the, let's see, there is the Stephen, where is the Stephen Doss? I'm looking for it on the face place. But what it is, is this rural church in the Ozarks in Missouri, outside of Joplin, um, I believe. And what had happened was, um, the name of the article is, Do You Have the Balls to Attend the Manliest Church in the United States? Now, so it, is that a self-claimed title, or did someone just make a link bank headline? Either way, it's working on me. But I'm pretty sure it's a link bank. Li- it's a... It's a clickbait. But the first line of this article is, Pastor Heath Moneyham wants to kick you in the nuts with Christ. So what this is... Is this like drop kick me Jesus through the goalposts of life? I think so. Um, But what it sounds like is, it's basically uh, a more traditional American masculinity church um, giving out, in addition to pastoral care, I assume they do pastoral care there. Um, assault rifles on Father's Day to get people to come into church. Oh. And what it is is this guy, Pastor Mooneyham, um, has decided to reclaim Christianity for the red-blooded American male. Um, I know. This church is called Ignite. Ignite. Um, Ignite. Um, basically, what he says is he... Uh, He's a guy with a beer gut and a beard and a hot wife, and he loves Jesus. Um, yeah, yeah. And so that's what Christianity has become in this area is uh, guns, beer, babes, and Jesus. Um, and I believe, yeah, it was one of those things where he... Uh, Do, 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 do. What's he says? Um, he he set up a thing, a billboards all across Joplin that's like God loves sex to get people to come his come to his church to hear about how God loves sex. Um, and his big mission statement is: we love our God, we love our country, we love our trucks, and we love our guns. Um, and so, my question to you, uh, Mr. Trey Comstock, how much of this is? the red-blooded American male coming into Christianity, i.e., this is a rural congregation, 800 people, you know, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of gun-toting people out there because, you know, it is rural. It's rural, it's the Ozarks, so it's the rural Midwest slash South. Um, and a lot of times churches, you know, grow because they're with their con context um okay so so this is context and how much of this is you know being a real man's man for jesus so i have been i will pick up there in a second um some updates um so i wanted to make sure that one we weren't dedicating a um 
the whole segment or whole show to something that isn't real. It yes. appears to be a appears to be very real. I just want to yes. double check. <laughs> He's also there's an 11 minute apology video on their website currently, <laughs> starring Pastor uh, Mooney. So I haven't listened to this uh, video yet, um, but so apparently at least some semblance of this is real. Okay, so as you know kind of any class on missions and mission theology is going to talk about this or if you're from a reputable place is going to talk about a tension between what is contextual and what is universal that is what is shared by all christians and what can be changed to be appropriate for the setting so uh in a global worship class i'm in now um, it was a remote um, South American rural community, and they used traditional, they, you know, the whole New Testament got translated into their language using names for gods that they had before mm -hmm. um, to talk about God as we know God. Um, and that that just became an appropriate way for them to communicate. So it was contextualizing it, or how healing has become a big part of um, African. African initiated churches in Africa because uh, partly because of the breakdown of the healthcare system there things like that so there's always an element of what is contextual and then there's things that we kind of think of as universal like right. you know the trinity or at least god and jesus and the holy spirit how they fit together uh, maybe looked at different in different denominations but we have roles for those three the role of scripture um these kind of things are more looked at as universals and so what you have to look at with the uh, Sex, Guns, and Jesus Church is, excuse me, Ignite, is how much are they throwing away universals mm -hmm. in order to be super contextual, right? Because you can sell anything if you're willing to alter core theology. Yeah. The key to missions and outreach is being contextual enough to be able to communicate with the group you're trying to reach, Right. So, like, I am not going to go into my context. I am also a rural pastor. I am not going to go in my context with a laser light show or, you know, throwing out the 11 o'clock service because I think it's old and stuffy. It's not my style, but it's neither old nor stuffy. It's just not my style. But to do that would be rejecting their context or to say it's a total waste of time to do a chicken queue as a fundraiser. It's a huge fundraiser. Who would have thought? But that made sense for their context. Apparently selling barbecue chicken, huge thing. It's good chicken. Um, but if you would have pitched that idea to me, I would have looked to go, in the 21st century, who cares? Apparently that whole community cares. So serves me right for doubting it. So that's being contextual. What I think they have done in an effort to be contextual and hip and red, not hip, red, right? Manly. Manly is... They've thrown out some pretty core Christian values. And they've given, you know, one of the quotes is, oh, what is it about hot wives? And we're just a bunch of dudes with beards, beer guts, and hot wives. We love our God. We love our country. We love our trucks. And we love our guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, we, there is a, long-standing debate in this country about the link between God and country. So I'm not actually going to pick up on that one for once, because we've talked about that. But that is a prevailing a theological mode within the United States. So you can't call him out, only him out, for saying it. You have to call out, like, good, possibly the majority of Christians in this country for that one. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a website that I look at a lot from Conservapedia. Um, and it's one of their big things is we, uh, we're gun carrying and Bible believing Christians. We stand up for God and country and our, uh, second amendment rights. Right. I mean, it's built in, the, you know, the boy Scouts, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, is God and country do my best to do my duty to God and my country. I mean, my God, and my, it, it, it's. It's baked into a lot of our national culture. For me, what always what stands out in that particular quote is hot wives. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Like, I get. I just remember. Right. I get that uh, that the female form 
can be attractive to the straight male. I am a straight male. I understand this. But what are we saying theologically when corridor identity is vaguely or more than vaguely objectifying our wives? Yeah. Yeah, a core part of identity is the fact that we have a hot wife. As someone with a hot wife, sorry, sweetheart, uh, but I am objectifying you but for you this. You can just instance. go with a, a wife who you are attracted to. Yeah. Which, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not some weird psychologist. Like, I get that physical attraction is part of it. Absolutely. Um and and it's more than it more than a biological impulse. It you know it is. It's, that's a sign of your identity is the fact that your wife is hot. Right, but it but that your it's, identity as a faith community yeah. is that you use this language of hot wives. Mm -hmm. What? I that kind of like I am not talking about being super politically correct here right right I what mean, i'm talking about here is the use of the phrase hot wives mm -hmm. and so basically you know and and from my perspective as a progressive christian built into his statement is violence in the form of mm -hmm. gun ownership is idolatry of nation is destruction mm -hmm. of the environment in the form of trucks and it mm -hmm. It is drunkenness, um, potentially, and not necessarily, you know, neither you nor I are teetotalers. Um, and so, you know, I, you know I, beer is good in moderation, sure, um, but not taking care of your body um, if you've developed a beer gut, and yeah. then objectifying your wife. So, you're really hitting me on a lot of cylinders there, um, <laughs> Reverend. Um, and, like, I get creating a worship space that is comfortable for mm -hmm. people, right? And so if you want to use Band of Brothers clips, and if you want to, you know, oh, we dress real casual, you can let your belly hang out. Fine, like, that's cool. Good. Yeah, good. Like, let's let's find as many ways as possible that people can authentically connect with God. Mm -hmm. But there's a really key phrase in there, and that is authentically. <laughs> yeah, authentically. That looks like Christianity. And... This doesn't look like loving everyone equally. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say, yeah, we are who we are, and that's great, but you have taken what can be positive aspects of your identity, and you've said that all aspects of all activities that are part of this identity are part of Christianity. Yeah. And that's where I disagree, like fundamentally. That not everything about what I do is Christian. Like, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Um, but this, instead of saying, oh, some aspects of our lifestyle fall short of the glory of God, and we're going to hold each other accountable for that. Like, oh, I drink too much. Let's let me as my, belly. but let me as my group of bros, let us band together as bros and do broing better. That's not what this is saying. This is saying everything about being bros is awesome, like Jesus. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I think you just broed out. I little. just broed out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the fact that, you know, there doesn't seem to be, and I'm not saying that there has to be, like, deep theology for someone's faith. Um, there's not going to be people thinking, oh, Schleiermacher, oh, yeah, I'd... Nietzsche, oh, Kierkegaard. I read Kierkegaard, and that really... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there has Sorry. to be some semblance of those, like, those big things. And, you know, from what we get from this article, it's just like, I love Jesus because I'm awesome. Now, let's be clear. Like, this article is not exactly in favor of no. Ignite. No. Um, yeah. So this is not what we would call a balanced perspective on it. But the pull, I mean, for me, it's not so much the tone. It's like, you know, you're giving out assault rifles at church where, like, Christ tells people, like, don't take your weapons with you, like, put the away. Like, folks, I get that we have interwoven Christianity and American culture to the point where you cannot recognize Christianity without thinking of it as American. Yeah. I get that. 
you know, flags in churches. Mm-hmm. Flag in my church, even. Just kind of keep moving it further and further to the side. Hopefully um, one day it'll tump off. No, I've got enough military folks in my congregation. They'd notice if it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it's one thing for, like, reading the names of veterans around Veterans Day. Like, that's all right. Like, let's remember people. Um, it's actually right around All Saints, and so it kind of fits in. Um, you know, and, and that's contextual. And we pray for the troops every week. Um, yeah. If I don't bring it up, someone does. And, that you know, I think that kind of theological expression of care for America is one thing. But mm-hmm. we're in, like, the, what I think of as the darker sides of American culture, the lack of care for the environment and the love of violence and objectification mm-hmm. becomes core to the identity of a church. We need to step back and think about what are we doing? Have yeah. we have we perhaps lost sight of what is universally Christian and have blurred that with what is, quote unquote, inherently American? Yeah. And, you know, there's this, yeah, like you said, there's this huge ingraining where America is, thanks to Ronald Reagan, this shiny city on a hill that the Bible talks about. Um, and so naturally the American way, which happens to be men are awesome. Um, men are, I mean, men are are awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's... there's an awesome uh, Mitchell and Webb. Uh, they're a British comedy group that's like, shows women and it's it's an advertisement for women and it's all like you're achy and you're lazy and your kids yeah, are yeah, seen running it, yeah. around and stuff and then the next one it's like men get drunk and shave because you're already perfect get drunk and shave it's already perfect yeah I've, yeah I which is which is kind of like this it's like men you have hot wives and beer bellies you're already perfect now you just need jesus in your life yeah, and Jesus would be just like you, a broke exactly. out man. Yeah. If Jesus was here, Jesus would have a hot wife. But Jesus died for your sins, and that's why you need to come to Christ. Come to Christ. And with like I, I I'm not like I don't wanna like you know, I am not super broy, perhaps. Yeah. But I'm not this is not an attack on Brodom. Um that we'll get- We'll, we'll t- attack Brodom in a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I mean, what I'm talking about is if you want an all-male accountability group because that's where you feel more comfortable. By all means. And y'all want to communicate by grunting and scratching and insulting each other. I'm that's scratching fine. right now, yes. I mean, that like that's not kind of how I hey, necessarily hang out. Though, you know, I have my high school friends, and it's kind of closer to that, I suppose. But so that's not what I'm on about. What I'm on about is this, like, lack of recognition that any of these other things might be a problem. Yeah. These things may be a little problematic, like handing out guns to get people to church. And his, his you know, thing is like, yes, this may be weird, but it also got 53 people to come to Christ. So his thing is like, I'm getting conversions. It's working. Yeah, ISIS, I think, says the same thing. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, yeah, no, you are reaching the unchurched. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what are you reaching with them? What are you reaching them with? And what are they learning? Right? I could open up my dumb megachurch vision setters. Anytime I'm trying to create a fake megachurch, I call it vision setters because I think that sounds like the worst name for a church. And so I could open up vision setters. I could start spending a lot more money on my hair and I could bring a lot of people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you look at Joel Osteen, for instance, the gospel gets watered down to the point where it is unrecognizable. This is not Bonhoeffer's costly grace, right? This is not like Calvin's fear and trembling in the presence of God. This is not Bart's inherent otherness of God. No, no, no. This is going to come in and jump, drop kick God in the face. Going to drop kick you in the face. 
we're going to grab God by the balls and steer him our way. Like, yep. <laughs> that came out of my mouth. <laughs> that is not that the show. That is not the show title. <laughs> oh, no. No. God by the balls. Yep. Yeah, I said steer that. Steer him our way. <laughs> God, I'm a bad person. <laughs> God. This oh, is, but this isn't like. I, I, I connect this directly to Joel Osteen as too much contextual, too mm-hmm. much what people want to hear, not mm-hmm. what people need to hear. I, you know, right. I, I, I bring this up in pre- premarital counseling uh, when we're talking about budgeting money. And mm-hmm. one of the things I said is, you know, as a pastor, I'm never going to make that much, um, assuming I'm doing, doing my job right. It's a weird field where if you're doing your job right, your income won't ever get that high unless you get a book yeah. deal, and that's a little different. But as a pastor, you're never going to get paid all that much Mm-mm. unless you have sold your theology out to what people want to hear. Mm-hmm. That if you're not mixing the, you know, the welcoming and the yes, Christ loves and Christ forgives, combined with the challenge of so go and live your life differently. Or mm-hmm. as you know, the Bonhoeffer quote I used in my sermon this past week was, you know, freedom for others or freedom for responsibility, right? If you're not preaching that, it's really easy to become a millionaire. Exactly. Looking at Joel. Or really easy to get 800 folks and bring 53 people to Christ. And, you know, I, I have no idea those people. Maybe these are, like, f- you know, truly transformative conversions. Mm-hmm. But... You have linked the gospel with, you know, the destruction of the environment, the destruction of your body, the objectification of women, and violence. Yeah. And I have a problem. I have a problem with that. It's not just all conversions are yay, great. You still have to understand. You have to look at the content of the message. It's not where I'm not looking for divine check boxes. As a good Wesleyan theologian, it's sort of about how you live your life subsequent to that that the church is also interested in. It's not like congratulations, you've made it into the special club. Here's your assault rifle and your hot wife. It's what do you do now? Like like justification begins a process. Yeah, it doesn't um, end a process. Sparkhouse has this awesome curriculum for confirmation, and one of the things it says about Methodism is there's nothing you can ever do to make God love you more. Now get your butt to work. Yeah, no, I mean, that, it's a slightly yeah, satirical view of us, but that's not yeah, but it's, not but it's awful. Not, it's not off the, the mark, and in this one it's like, hey, there's nothing you can do to ever have God love you less. I mean nothing. Here's an assault rifle. Go care for creation. Wink. Uh, <laughs> care for creation. Blood blowing stuff up. Now let me just, you know, yes, hunting is good. It helps trim the that population. That is actually stuff. creation care. I, you know, I. Yeah. And, but yeah. hunting with an assault rifle. Right. Like, uh, mo- do we really need to do that? How effective is that, really? I mean, generally, I'm no great hunter. I have been hunting. And I grew up, you know, again, I grew up in Texas. I work in the rural south. Like, I have, wouldn't that damn it, the more bullets you put into it, the worse it is to eat, right? I assume it would be a bit, you know, metally. Right. Or, you know, poisonous. It's lead. Lead isn't good for you, right? I've been told, like, lead is bad. You shouldn't eat the lead paint, or so they told me when I was a child. Um, don't eat the lead paint. Um, and, you know, it probably don't want to put too many bullets in the thing that's not being a responsible hunter and um yeah and again like this is not necessarily i'm not necessarily debating gun ownership as a concept within secular governance what i'm talking about is linking the church an instrument of peace with the handing out of weapons which admittedly we've done in our history, but we don't generally look kindly on that aspect of our history. Back on it and go, what did we do? Why? why? Just why? Um. So yeah. Um. I'm. You know. I. I may have to watch the apology video and just find out, like, what happened next. What happened next. <laughs> because. But but, you know, honestly, you have to know that there's another church in the wings. 
that's just, you know, like, if I just, you know, stay out of, you know, the devil's path, I could do this, and it could get huge, and... Yeah. So is the next one going to be your church up in uh, Georgia? No, although I might put in a weight room. That, you know, that seems like a really manly thing, um, yeah. and it is, is positive. I... Th- th- this church, I don't know if you've ever seen these these pictures of manly Jesus. Um, yes. g- Google image search manly Jesus. It's like, you know, G- like rippled six-pack Jesus whip- uh, lifting weights or whatever. And this is like manly Jesus paintings, the church, um, which is really productive. Uh, so if you have any feedback for us, uh, if you want to talk about your experiences with manly Jesus, um, send boldly at nfear.org. Um, facebook.com slash the sign your name project or at sin boldly on twitter and go in peace to love and serve the lord and end fear by signing your name good night He's a man, such a man. He's a real, real man's man.